Recently, Iran launched drones and missiles towards Israel, which it claims was retaliation for a deadly strike on its consulate in Damascus, Syria. Although Israel has not yet taken responsibility for the consulate strike, it is widely believed to have been behind it. This marks the first instance of Iran directly attacking Israel. Prior to this incident, Israel and Iran had been engaged in a years-long shadow war, where they would attack each other's assets without admitting responsibility. However, the frequency and intensity of these attacks have increased significantly during the current war in Gaza, which was sparked by the Palestinian group Hamas's assault on nearby Israeli communities in October of last year. So, why are Israel and Iran enemies? The two countries used to be allies until the 1979 Islamic Revolution in Iran, which brought in a regime that has used opposing Israel as a key part of its ideology. Iran does not recognize Israel's right to exist and seeks its eradication. Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, the country's supreme leader, has previously referred to Israel as a cancerous tumor that will undoubtedly be uprooted and destroyed. Israel believes that Iran poses an existential threat due to Tehran's rhetoric, its buildup of proxy forces sworn to Israel's destruction, its funding and arming of Palestinian groups, including Hamas and the Lebanese Shia militant group Hezbollah. Additionally, Israel strongly suspects that Iran is secretly pursuing nuclear weapons, a claim that Tehran denies. On Saturday night, Iran launched a bombardment on Israel in what they claim was a response to an airstrike on an Iranian consulate building in Damascus on 1st April. The airstrike resulted in the death of several senior Iranian commanders, including Brigjen Mohammad Reza Zahedi, a prominent figure in the Iranian operation to arm the Lebanese Shia armed group Hezbollah. This attack has been attributed to Israel, although the country has not confirmed responsibility for it. Iran considers the airstrike to be a violation of its sovereignty and has blamed Israel for the attack. This incident is not an isolated one, as Israel has been accused of carrying out several airstrikes on Iranian targets in Syria in recent months. The Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, IRGC, Iran's elite Republican guards, has been using Syria to channel arms and equipment, including high-precision missiles, to Hezbollah. Israel is determined to stop these deliveries and to prevent Iran from increasing its military presence in Syria. The consulate attack is part of a wider conflict between the two nations, with Israel trying to prevent Iran from strengthening its military capabilities and influence in Syria. The situation remains tense, and it is unclear what the future holds for these two countries. Iran has established a network of allies and proxy forces in the Middle East, which it calls the Axis of Resistance. These forces challenge the interests of the U.S. and Israel in the region and are supported to varying degrees by Iran. Syria is Iran's most important ally, and it helped the Syrian government of Bashar al-Assad survive the country's decade-long civil war, along with Russia. Hezbollah in Lebanon is the most powerful armed group backed by Iran, and it has been involved in cross-border fire with Israel on an almost daily basis since the war erupted between Israel and Hamas. Tens of thousands of civilians on both sides of the border have been forced to leave their homes. Iran also backs several Shia militia in Iraq which have attacked U.S. bases in Iraq, Syria and Jordan with rocket fire. The U.S. retaliated after three of its soldiers were killed at a military outpost in Jordan. In Yemen, Iran supports the Houthi movement which controls the most populated areas of the country. To show support for Hamas in Gaza, the Houthis have fired missiles and drones at Israel and have also been attacking commercial shipping near its shores, sinking at least one vessel. The U.S. and U.K. have responded by striking Houthi targets. Iran also provides weapons and training to Palestinian armed groups, including Hamas. Hamas attacked Israel on October 7 last year, sparking the current war in Gaza and confrontations involving Iran, its proxies, and Israel's allies in the wider Middle East. However, Iran denies any involvement in the October 7th attack itself. Iran is geographically much larger than Israel and has a population of nearly 90 million, which is almost 10 times greater than Israel's. However, Iran's size does not necessarily mean it has a superior military power. Iran has focused on investing heavily in missiles and drones and has built up a significant arsenal for itself. Additionally, it has supplied substantial amounts of weapons to its proxies, the Houthis in Yemen and Hezbollah in Lebanon. However, Iran lacks modern air defense systems and fighter jets. 
Reports suggest that Russia is working with Iran to improve its air defense systems and fighter jets in exchange for military support Tehran has given Moscow in its conflict with Ukraine. While Israel, on the other hand, has one of the world's most advanced air forces. According to the IIS Military Balance Report, Israel has at least 14 squadrons of jets, including F-15s, F-16s, and the latest F-35 stealth jet. Israel also has experience conducting strikes deep inside hostile territory. Israel is widely believed to possess nuclear weapons, but the country has never confirmed or denied this assumption. Instead, Israel has maintained an official stance of ambiguity regarding its nuclear capabilities. In contrast, Iran has been openly enriching uranium to 60% purity for over two years, which is in violation of the 2015 nuclear deal with world powers. Even the global nuclear watchdog found uranium particles enriched to 83.7% purity, dangerously close to weapons grade, at Iran's underground Fordo site last year. Iran attributed these high enrichment levels to unintended fluctuations. The 2015 nuclear deal between Iran and world powers, including the U.S., was aimed at limiting Iran's nuclear program in exchange for sanctions relief. However, the deal has been on the brink of collapse ever since former U.S. President Donald Trump withdrew from it unilaterally in 2018 and reimposed harsh economic sanctions on Iran. It's worth noting that Israel had opposed the nuclear deal from the outset. The recent events in Israel and Iran have raised concerns globally. While Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has expressed confidence in their ability to block and intercept any threats, foreign policy advisor Tom Fletcher has warned that Iran's actions are a chilling signal of their reach and capability. Both nations are facing pressure at home and facing international criticism which has led to the current situation. Fletcher suggests that Iran's attack was carefully calibrated and that they had telegraphed their intentions in advance, which made it easier for Israeli forces to deter them. He compared this to previous exchanges of fire that he had witnessed while serving as an ambassador to Lebanon, where the goal was to show capability rather than escalate the situation. He also noted that it was a positive sign that Iran had chosen to respond directly rather than through Hezbollah, as some Israelis had called for the military to expand its confrontation with the Lebanese armed group to push it back from the border. Sanam Vakil from the Chatham House think tank also weighed in, stating that the attack had been a success from Iran's point of view and that they were calling Israel's bluff. She noted that Iran had breached and violated Israel's sovereignty directly for the first time, but that the strikes were directed at military installations and not intended to cause significant damage or harm anyone. In summary, the situation is complex and delicate, and it is essential for all parties involved to exercise restraint and seek diplomatic solutions to prevent further escalation.